Hi there! Today I'm going to show you how to make an ornament for your holiday decorations. So here is the finished look. This is the paw print pattern I was talking about in my last floss tube video. Um, this one I finished it last night so I could show you a little uh, finished product. And then I kind of thought, well, why not show you how I do it all together? Um, we'll consider this one of my tutorial videos. <laughs> sure, why not? Um, and hopefully it goes well. So, of course, you want to start out with your finished product, your finished pattern. This will work for any pattern at all. Like, it doesn't have to be um, a small one. It doesn't have to be a big giant one. It can be anything you want. Um, you can kind of go wild with it really. Col any color, any type of fill. I'm sure you could even use different kinds of fill. Um, what we have here, what the easiest way that I've figured out how to do it, um, I have my pattern. I have cut a piece of felt to just a little bit bigger than the edges. We will trim it closer when the time comes, but it's better to have a little bit more than not enough. Then you have your floss. I am sticking with all black for this one. Uh, this pattern here I used the same color as the pattern for the outlining stitch. And you'll want some stuffing. Um, you can buy stuffing almost at any fabric store, Michaels, Walmart. What I like to do um, it's kind of like the cheap way out, but it works very well. I buy uh, new pillows from the dollar store or Walmart, things like that. The cheapest ones I can find, um, generally like $4, and I use the stuffing from that. I cut the seam open, and I only use the pillow for my stuffing purposes. So yeah, it's the cheapest way to go about it and it lasts me a very long time. And then you'll want some string, cotton string. You can also use a ribbon or twine, anything at all really that strikes your fancy. I'm going with the thinner string like I did here too. And uh, I have a lot of this cotton, I think it's 10 count thread, uh, like Aunt Lydia's crochet thread. Works really well for that. You'll want a good pair of scissors to cut up your felt and then your embroidery scissors for the closer snips. And I already have my needle threaded. So with this pattern, I want to leave frayed edges. So those frayed edges, I am pulling out two rows and I am stitching two rows in, so a total of four. So you're gonna to wanna to count in from the corner for four holes. One, two, three, four. When you go in on a diagonal, this way, am I too far away? Sorry. Uh, when you're counting in on a diagonal, you're getting top and bottom at the same time. So, saves you a little bit of time. So I'm just gonna poke through just so I can make that hole a little bigger so I don't f get lost on my way back through. There we are. I'm loop starting, so we're going to do this. And I'm just gonna make sure that there is four up top. Four, yes. So we're gonna go down. I'm gonna try to get a little bit closer here. We're gonna go down to do a straight line, like in back stitching, grab up our loop to do our loop start, make it tight. So we have one little line stitch. And we're going to, instead of back stitching, we're going to do a running stitch. So this is the next hole. Now instead of going back like we would normally do, we're going to keep going forward one stitch at a time and having that center stitch skipped. And 
and we're going to do this all the way down to our corner. I'm going to try to do this as quick as I can. <clears throat> I picked the smallest name that I had so for the video so I could make it go a little faster. Just so you're not staring at me stitch forever. But oh and again I'm going too fast so I'm nodding up. This is a bad habit of mine. So when we have a little knot you find your loop Stick your needle in and just give it a little tug. Quite often that unravels it. There we go. Black thread with the black table is getting me messed up. <laughs> and there we go, I had some momentum going. So I had talked about it in my last floss tube. This pattern is one that I had made. Um, the paw prints I had drawn up myself. They... Not sure, buddy. Um, with with the paw print pattern, I also created an alphabet with numbers so that you could also add in uh, yearly dates, birth dates, memorial dates, that sort of thing. Um, I, once I eventually upload, I also have added in um, blackwork style angel wings for the memorial pieces as an alternative. So now we're at our bottom where there's only four rows left here. So we're going to curve sideways instead of straight down. So you want to make sure that your felt is still staying even and flush with the Ada. You don't need to create a pocket because the stuffing will expand the felt a little bit. It'll naturally do it. If you create a pocket you might just end up having um, a lumpy ornament. So you just start going sideways here. And as we go, we're going to, once we get up along this side edge here, we're going to leave the top part open so we can put our stuffing inside. And closing up with stuffing in can be a little bit tricky. So you do have to just kind of maneuver it around a bit. Then we go over. My son's making his own video. He's having a hard time, I think. So now we're at our four, so here, instead of continuing sideways again, we will start to go up. You can also use this method to do bookmarks. Um, you just wouldn't stuff it, but it does help to keep the backs of your projects for your bookmarks from getting, well, from being visible for one and getting like 
caught on things and being out in the open. Having the felt on the back keeps it nice and tidy and it makes it a little more sturdier for your books. I did, uh, on Valentine's Day, I did a bunch of bookmarks for my nieces and nephews. I used a lot of patterns. I used all the patterns, actually, from uh, Highland Myrrh Blackwork. I made Snoopy and um, a Hockey Valentine's for my nephew and a Shrek Valentine's for my niece. A bunch of really cute little ones like that. Um, and then I backed them with the felt, just like I'm doing here. And I sent them off in the mail, and they turned out fantastic. And a lot of this craft felt you can find at the dollar store in a little package and now we're up at the top same thing here and then we're gonna start to go over sideways now we don't want to go all the way across just enough to get our top established all right, so we're gonna put that there on the side. And what we're gonna do now is cut our string for our length. Uh, I never measure anything, I eyeball everything. So you have your full length of string, bring your edges together and just make a knot. Doesn't have to be extremely sturdy just as long as it's knotted. So put that to the side. We're going to grab our stuffing, kind of make a little pouch. I'm going to break this into pieces because that might be too much. And you're just going to use your finger to Whoa. Stuff it in there. And you can just stuff it till you feel it's enough for how wide and sturdy you want it. If you want it a little more on the softer, floppier side, fluffier side, don't put as much. If you want it more stiff, then you can just add in a little bit more. So now we have that in nice and tight. Mine's more on the sturdy side. So from here you're going to take your string, knot side in, just lay it on top. This is kind of the tricky part because you do need to be able to catch the string between a few stitches once you get to the center of your pattern, which again is mostly eyeballing. With this pattern I know that my center is between these two paws here, so that's generally up around here. So I'm not quite there yet. So again you just go back from your, make sure you're not catching your, your string. Not there yet. Now I'm just going to catch about, I'd say three stitches in, should be enough to hold it. So from here, what you want to do when you put your, your needle in, I hope you can see this, kind of put it over Make sure you catch it over. Can you see that? 
the needle is over the string. So when you pull it through, it's going to keep that in there. So same here, make sure that your needle is going through the string and not under it. And then we're pulling back again. And one more time. So from here, I'm still over, so we're good. So usually about three stitches. We'll keep it there nice and sturdy. Now I don't have to worry about that anymore. So you just want to go across to just finish it up. His video is not working well for him, so don't mind his theatrics. All right, so now from here, we have our last stitch in. Oh, of course, I knotted up. There we go. Try to get those knots on here. They can't be left behind. <laughs> So you're going to want to do the same thing that you would do with your cross stitch is just weave your end in. Um, this is common with crochet, knitting, and cross stitch. If you just weave it on through, you'll be good to snip it as close as possible. And our little ravioli is good to go. So you're gonna take your embroidery scissors and snip as close as possible. And just move your fluff around so it's evenly distributed. <clears throat> now you could finish it just like this. It's still very pretty nothing at all wrong with that but we're going to do a little bit extra so to unravel your edges I use my needle to pop out at the last hole here at the top take your needle put it in the hole and just pull off to the side and then I'll do that with the one underneath also and then grab that little pile and pull And then you want to do that all the way around. The little hole, pull out that end pile. Make sure only to grab that pile of four threads. And up here. Again, you could stop at just one, it still looks nice, but we're going for two. So the second one is a little bit harder because it wants to fight you on it a little. So just pull gently so that you don't accidentally create a knot or unravel things. Again, you go to the hole in the corner might have to go from the back, whichever, just to grab your threads and carefully pull. And again, if it gives you a real hard time, you could pull the threads individually. That's something that's possible to do as well. Here, I'll show you what it looks like to do it individually. So again, I'm gonna poke through and just get out there. And then you just grab one at a time until you have them all out. Take your needle, pull it out, and 
There we go. So that is our two row. And what we do from here, I am going to trim it just a tad closer. To the edging. So just be careful that you don't snip anything. You don't want to lose your frayed or your string by accident. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to do it on camera as well. It's not quite that easy. <laughs> there we go. Oh, and there. Little haircut. And there we have it. Nice and quick, doesn't take forever. You end up with the nice little corners and it looks like a little pillow or on this side, a ravioli. <laughs> so there we are, there's your ornaments and hopefully soon I will have the pattern up on my Etsy for sale. I don't price my patterns very high, just enough to help me keep going. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you learned something new. Have a good night. Bye.